In this video, we are going to look at some of the rules of inheritance and subtypes in TypeScript. TypeScript is a little bit different from a lot of other languages that allow you to do inheritance or subtypes. And one of the main perspectives I like to use for this is to talk about set theory. Let's start with a very simple string. We have a job name that is a simple string, send email. And then we have four job name types here. The first one is just string. Well, we know our job name variable is part of that type. But it can also be part of this template string type where we have some string and then dash email at the end. We've got a union here of three different types, one of which is send email. Our job name matches that type as well. And finally, we have the narrowest type of all, just the string send email. And that's exactly what our variable also represents. So our job name variable can be treated as all four of these types because TypeScript works in a shape based way. All of these three types, two, three, and four, are all subtypes or subsets of values that all match inside of job name one. And you could also say that job name four as a type here is a subset of both type two and type three. So this is kind of how subtyping works in TypeScript. And I want to talk a little bit in this video about two interesting concepts that come with inheritance. Now, there are some great articles on this topic that I'm going to link in the description below. Some of those use classes and extending classes as examples of the principles we're going to talk about here. Instead, I want to take what I think is a little bit more of a TypeScripty or at least a JavaScripty approach and look at these as type aliases and not as classes that we're extending. So in our example today, we've got a job, and then we have a priority job. These are jobs that you might put on a queue. And notice that priority job extends our job type with a few new properties. Now, extending types gets interesting when we talk about how that works within generics. Let's say we have a job variable that represents a job object and a priority job, of course, that represents a priority job. If you're not familiar with the declare syntax in TypeScript, it just allows you to say this is a variable that exists without actually populating that variable value. It's a great way to just play around with types in the TypeScript playground here. Notice if we create variables now that are job types, both job and priority job can be assigned to J1 and J2. Job, of course, is a job. Priority job is also a job because we're assigning a more narrow value here to a broader type. So what happens when we start using these job types inside of other generic types as the generic parameter? For example, a very simple generic is the array, right? We can have an array of jobs or an array of priority jobs. And so the question is, if priority job extends job, what is the relationship between an array of job and an array of priority job? Well, we can kind of test that here by saying, if we were to create two variables that are both an array of jobs, what can we assign to that? We can assign a job array, of course, because that's the same type, but we can also assign a priority job array. So this is what's called covariance in programming languages. We say that array is covariant over type, in this case, type T. If type A extends type B, then an array of A also extends an array of B. And this is how a lot of generic types work in TypeScript. Arrays, of course, but also promises, maps and sets, any generic type that is a wrapper or an envelope type, those will all be covariant on their generic argument. And that should feel pretty natural. That's probably behavior that you're already very familiar with. But there's another relationship here that is a little bit less intuitive. So let's take a look at this. Our example here is a job executor function. We have this executor type that takes some parameter J, and this is a function that takes a J and then returns success or failure. And we can create two variables here, job executor and priority job executor, which is exactly those types. And now let's see how this works when we try and assign these values to different types. So E1 here is an executor job. And of course, we can pass it our job executor. It's the exact same type. That makes sense. E2 here, however, doesn't work. Priority job is a subtype of job, but an executor of priority job seems to not be a subtype of an executor of job. And if we take a look at the error here, you can see that that's exactly the case executor priority job not assignable to type executor job. The type job is not assignable to the type priority job. At first, this might seem weird, but if you think about it, we want to be able to pass any job to E2 and have that execute that job, right? However, what we're saying here is we're trying to assign it a function that needs to take a priority job, which is something narrower. And so we could never type, and so we could never pass a job type to the priority job executor. Priority job executor will probably want to take use of some priority job specific fields, and it can't do that if all it has is a normal job. So this relationship kind of makes sense. However, if we flip this around, this is where things get interesting. E3 and E4 are supposed to be executors of priority job. And of course, E4 makes sense. We can say priority job executor is an executor of priority job. However, the job executor 
can be assigned to the priority job executor E3. How does this work? Well, this may seem weird because you might think I'm always going to be passing a priority job to E3. How can a job executor do the right thing. But remember, a priority job is just a more specific type of job. And if our job executor can deal with a normal job, then every priority job is also a normal job. So this makes sense. It has no problems at all. Essentially, though, what we're seeing here is when we have a type like executor, the subtype relationship has reversed, which is why we say that executor is contravariant over J, which is to say if A is a subtype of B, then executor of A is not a subtype of executor of B, it's actually reversed. Executor of B is now a subtype of executor A. Now, if you're thinking about some of the examples, now if you're thinking about this example and then also the example we looked at for covariance, you might wonder if the main difference here is that executor is a function and you're almost there. Executor is a function. It's a function that takes this generic argument as an input. And there's a difference between an input and an output argument. And an output, of course, would just be a function that takes a generic that is a return value. Let's take a look at what this looks like. Here we have an example of a queue and we have two functions on this queue. We have an NQ, which takes its generic argument J as an input. And then we have get job, which maybe takes an ID and returns that job from the queue. And that uses its generic argument as an output. So we have them in both positions here. Now notice that I'm using some special keywords here that were introduced in TypeScript 4.7. So these are not particularly new. As of recently, they were new to me, which is why we're talking about this in this video. We don't need to put those in place. However, if we want to be very specific, about the way we plan to use J, we can do that. For example, if we want to say that we expect J to be used as an input parameter only, we can give the J the modifier in. And notice that we have an error here. We can see that a Q type of super J is not assignable to a type sub J as implied by the variance notation. And specifically, this is because the return type of get job is incompatible. And so this is saying that if you want to be able to use J only as an input, well, then there's a problem with get job here. We're using it as an output. And then the variance relationship, the covariance or contravariance is not going to hold in the way that we expect. The other option, of course, is to say we only expect to use this as an out. I'll be honest, I don't understand why this isn't complaining about NQ here and saying that this is using it in the input parameter. If you're familiar with these modifiers and you have an explanation for that, I would love to hear that in the comments. But I think the most interesting thing we can do here is say that we expect this to be both an in and an out parameter. And if you think about it, what this means is that if we have a Q of type J, we can never use a subtype or a super type of J. It always has to be just J. And we can actually see that happening in this example right down here. So we have our job Q and our priority job Q. And then we have our four variables here. Two of them are job queues, two of them are priority job queues. And notice the two that are not erroring are the ones where we are assigning the exact types, right? So Q3 is a job queue that we're assigning to the type Q of job. Q6 is a priority job queue that we're assigning to the type Q of priority job. And those work just fine because those are the exact same types because the variables we're trying to assign to another variable is the same type. However, when we try and use our subtype relationships, in both of these cases, we're getting errors. We're seeing that job is not assignable to type priority job. And then the same thing here, job is not assignable to priority job. And so this syntax in and out can be handy if you want to enforce that when you have a queue of a particular generic type, you can only use that exact type. We can't use subtypes. We can't use super types. We have to make sure we're using the exact type. I'll admit that this is a little bit in the weeds when it comes to TypeScript. I'll also admit I've never had a chance to use in or out modifiers in production, but I recently discovered them and I thought this was an interesting corner of TypeScript that I hadn't explored. If you guys have practical examples of where this has been useful for you, I would love to hear about that. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.